factory project began life in the, about the, just after the year 2000. It was a sort of millennium project. Um, and it started by myself and another colleague uh, who were aware that we weren't really meeting the needs of Bangladeshi young people. Um, so we actually went out on the streets and started to talk to young people. And the first group of young people that we actually met was in a derelict factory. And we talked with them and we went back the following week and talked with them again, trying to understand what the needs were for this type of youth work. It was going to be a very much a street project. Um, they told us what they wanted from us uh, and how they wanted it, you know, how we had to adapt and improve what we did uh, as a service, as a youth service, so that we could better meet their needs. When we originally started, we started off with a very, very, very small budget, incredibly small, uh, and just basically two of us, and we were both like white workers who aren't Muslim, which is a long way from the members who we were trying to meet the needs of. Uh, and we were very frank and said, you know, we've, you know, we don't have a lot of experience. We have limitations. So can you teach us about Islam, can you teach us about being young and Asian and about streets, life, uh, which they did. Our longer term plan in four or five years was for the young people to become members of staff because we advertised for like two years and never got anybody applying for the work uh, for, to be an Asian street worker uh, because we were specifically looking for someone who was a Bangladeshi street worker and we couldn't get anyone. Uh, so we did the best we could and we've sort of grown our own workers now because most of the project work is actually done by young Asian men themselves and we sort of do more of an advisory capacity capacity in that and help manage and train those workers. And uh, what else have we got planned? Um, just giving out the program and... Kathim uh, has done a part-time worker certificate course through the County Council uh, which has taught him how to be a youth worker and that's done independently of us uh, by County Hall that we have a training department. Uh, he's worked with them and that's a one-year training course where he did a whole series of uh, activities that were focused but also formalized theoretical stuff uh, and he does that with, with trainers from uh, other youth clubs, other workers so he learns from lots of different directions. ACAS is just starting to go along that route and he's starting to do part-time training courses and things like that as well to improve his skills but a lot of their learning is, is around the, the coaching, the on the job learning about the issues, learning how to manage them A lot of our work is done in the 13 to 19, 20 year old age range, about 80% of it as part of our plan planning. Uh, so you get very complex needs. 11 to 14 year olds want a lot of different things to the older ones. So you have to change and adapt. So 11 to 14 year olds are doing a lot of things that are around positive use of leisure time, you know, uh, having fun. When you get over 14, 15, you know, the, the, you know, things are coming up like relationships, employment, exams and the pressures of adult life are starting to emerge and focus on you. And our key job is helping the transition to adulthood through those key years so we come out with happier young people that are more positive and know about how they fit into the wider world and, and, you know, and the community at large and how they can help it. The group is essentially very traditionally uh, Muslim as well. Uh, we do have some Hindus and that as well in the group. So, but it's not a religious project. We have Asian young people that aren't into any religion at all, you know. Uh, but it's a it's a it's a good mixture that does respect different cultures. So when we do things like camping, we we plan them carefully, you know, so that we can respect as many cultures as possible. You know, the, one of the camping trips we went on, we had nine different nationalities on it, nine different cultures. What a rich experience, fabulously rich experience, but very difficult as a worker to try to meet all those complex needs. 
you know, because we had like a Rastafarian and et cetera, et cetera, you know, quite, quite, it, it takes good planning and a lot of thought and you have to know the young people, you have to know what they want to eat, you know, whether they do prayers, you know, and you have to adapt your program around those specific needs. So what, what's well, happened then? Nothing, I've not heard of it yet. Yeah, so you put it in your well, I think you will. Some of the friendship groups we work with on the streets also have within them white, white young people. And, you know, these are friendship groups that are very, very strong and very, very supportive to each other. If anyone comes up to us and wants to talk to us, then we'll talk with them. You know, and we'll, we'll respect the diversity of the groups as well, you know, and the, the friendships that are important to young people. Often the strongest support systems that young people have are each other. I think if all the activities weren't there and I didn't have a penny to do an activity, the relationships would still be there and the work would still go on. You know, when we started that, the factory project out, we had £42 in the bank. That was it, you know, and to set a project up on such a minimal amount of money didn't matter because what what the young people were wanting was was a talking, dialogue, a relationship, you know, and that that doesn't cost a fortune, you know, it cost it takes time, not money, it takes time and it takes thought and it takes you know consideration, uh, and it you know sometimes they take a few knocks, you know, but hey, that's life. Thank mm -hmm. you.